Well, hello everybody. Again, it's time for another episode of Grow Eat at Home with Kyle Cushman. We like to call it Gua. And uh, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us here. Uh, a little recap from last week's episode. It was an awesome episode with Todd Salimi of Organics Alive, and it was extremely enlightening. Um, it was no surprise why I like the nutrients so much, um, and we got a lot of really good feedback, and I know you guys are going to be checking that out for sure. Um, today's uh, episode is about something uh, not quite so positive. We're going to do today's show about PM. I got a fly in my eye. Powdery mildew is a pain in the ass. And um, whether you're a commercial grower or a tent grower, um, it's one of those things, man, that, you know, uh, you can do everything right and it just wafts its way in on the air. It's not like uh, something you bring in on your feet or bad clones. Um, so I've got a, a guest who's an expert, an IPM expert. His name is Matthew Gates, and uh, he's been published in High Times and Skunk Magazine, and he's actually a resident expert on Homegrown Cannabis Co. So um, I say we just get to it, right? <laughs> All right, so here we are. Welcome to the show, Matthew Gates. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for uh, going out of your way um, to do this kind of last minute. Not that we hadn't, we, we actually, uh, Nate and I had been talking about you as a guest uh, for a couple of weeks now. But uh, uh, yeah, Matt was, uh, I keep calling Matt Nate and Nate Matt. I got a problem with people with two names. They're so pretentious. <laughs> And uh, he was displaced out of his house for a week because of a forest fire. And so uh, he normally would have come to me this week, but we're on the road again. And so as usual, I have my road bowl and I'm going to bless the episode with a quick toke in honor of Subcool. All right. I feel good. So, Matthew, um, you, uh, we've only met briefly, and I've seen some of the stuff you did for Homegrown Cannabis Co. You did a few videos with Parker, and uh, that's really awesome. And I love that you are an IPM expert, because I am the opposite of that. I am literally the opposite. It was anytime I had a large grower facility, I quickly delegated that to somebody else so that I could focus on making the music as they say, you know? Um, but it's very, very important. And what I'd like to focus on today is good old PM, powdery mildew. Is there a fancy Latin or Greek name for the PM that we know so well? Yeah, there, there are a few different names. So up until recently, uh, well, the family name for them is Erisifiaceae. Which, and is that uh, just the, is, is that the general uh, the 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 gray mold? That's the uh, powdery mildews. Right. Okay. And, um, and so, go ahead. And so the powdery mildews encompass a bunch of other species, of course. Some of them, a lot of them, are specialists. Some of them are generalists, so only a few of them will go after cannabis that we know of. Yeah, it's like that with the insect world, too. We're not afraid of all the bugs out there. We're only afraid of a handful. Um, the thing that, that gets me, and so the reason why this, is, this specific topic is very interesting to me, is because I still have trouble with powdery mildew. Not because I don't know how to handle it. I think I just get a little bit lazy and I, I, I get behind and then it sneaks up and it bites me in the butt. And the thing about um, PM is, is it's, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? With certain pests and pathogens, certain bugs, you can treat with a certain biological and it'll kind of build up and become a little bit systemic where the plant has some kind of a little bit of immunity to it, but that doesn't happen with PM. Is that correct? I would say that there are things you can do to sort of bioprime the plant a little bit. 
I like but that. The thing of you like that term? Yeah, we could talk about that a bit. But yeah, there are techniques that cultivators can use. Microbial is the probably the most common people think of, but there's stimulants you can use, natural compounds, that kind of thing that put the immune system on alert. And you can kind of you can kind of do that for the plant if you know like seasonality wise you might be getting powdery mildew soon or something. But the thing is, is that powdery mildew, like a lot of bugs, it reproduces so much that it can break resistance in plants pretty quickly. And we see that in a lot of crops. And cannabis, I'm sure, is one of them. Wow. And uh, yeah, that explains a lot. Um, So starting from the beginning, um, you know, most of the times when you keep parameters, let's just call them perfect. When you keep perfect parameters, you think that you're going to be immune from pathogens like this, but you're not. Um, you can keep the humidity really low at night and keep your dew point and your temperature really perfect and everything. But if there was any trace of it along, or if it just happens in on the wind, you know, it, it, it'll be there. So tell me, tell us a little bit about these uh, preventative measures that one can take. Sure. So powdery mildew is unique among fungi because it keeps a proportionally larger amount of water in its spores. They're also very small, of course, but they can actually do pretty good even in dry environments. So for powdery mildew, it's common that people like to keep the moisture down the humidity down, right? And that, of course, will be helpful in a lot of cases. And that also includes powdery mildew, but they do have a bit of a buffer. In what sense? In that they have some water, so they don't desiccate as quickly. Right. I didn't, I didn't expect that it would, um, it doesn't kill it off at all. It just slows down propagation. Is that the correct word? Yeah, definitely. And also with powdery mildew, and other fungi, one of the most important things with regards to like humidity, to consider at least, is that a sharp change can make the spores release. So are you saying that um, uh, there's no need to react? Because, okay, so let's, y- y- I'm fighting this now at the very end, and I'm probably going to have to pull my stuff down a little bit early. I'm not really concerned with it. Um, uh, because I didn't tie everything up well. I had an issue with, I changed my tents over and lost a bunch of space. So it's, uh, it's crowding for me. And so that's a big no, no for PM. You need air circulation to keep that from happening. So, um, so, uh, but so you didn't tell me something about some of these, uh, biostimulants that you can use to build up uh, resistance in the plants. Yeah, so there are some uh, natural products. Like, for example, many plants, they have evolved to respond to the structural components of their problem organism, fungus, insect, whatever. For powdery mildew, that can be chitin. Chitin makes up the fungus cell and the cell wall. And so detection of those specific chitin structures will make the plant think, oh, there's a problem. It'll even do this in response to beneficial fungi too, because the immune system even has to sort of collaborate with the good fungi as well and keep them in check, believe it or not. So they are always kind of a little bit more aware, if you were, if you have these structural compounds being exposed to. The only downside is that if you do this too much or too intensely, research shows that you can cause the plant to go too far in one direction and be less defended in another. So it's not as it's a zero sum game somewhat. So it's you're probably better off attacking it environmentally. I think so, unless you know for certain, like if you're outdoor versus indoor, you might have a different case like ultraviolet radiation from the sun not very good for the spores. So if you got a lot of that, that's going to be helpful for you. And certainly indoor growers can make use of that too. So I do agree that a nice environment can be really effective. Keeping them out is probably the superior position. Right. So, um, so, you know, just, it's simple to describe a really good, uh, anti 
PM environment, and that is a uh, a non uh, encroached space, uh, 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 not a very you know, not an overly dense um, plant count, uh, circulation above and below, and uh, and extremes. Stay away from extreme temperatures and humidity swings. Um, okay, so besides that, you know, so we got the we got the PM, and um, there's all kinds of products out there uh, to spray. There's a lot of foliar sprays. Um, there are basically there's uh, two models in my mind. There's the uh, heavy oil type spray. And then there's the, the, the spray that is mostly isopropyl and just a little bit of citric acid. And um, is, is there a, do you have a preference between those or can you describe a little bit about how each of those work or how well they do? Sure, yeah. In the case of the oil, basically it's a suffocant. So it suffocates the cell and or the spore usually or the, the colony. But also, um, there's usually some other nice compounds in there to accentuate that. So, so it might also be having a toxic effect. And um, for the isopropyl and citric acid, you might be getting a couple of different things. Of course, the alcohol is not great for the spores, but also the acid can change the pH. And there's products out there you can buy, like potassium bicarbonate products, that change the pH of the surface of the leaf. And that is uh, very negative for the powdery mildew spores when they are a sporling trying to develop and also for the colony in general. I've used that, that brings me back. That brings me back to the old gardener uh, uh, technique of using sulfur. And yes. um, sometimes, uh, well, I should say I've given consideration to the fact of uh, now sulfur. It's not something you wanted to do because it does leave a little bit of residue on the plants. So my question for you is, of all the treatments, what have you found to be the least, least effective on the actual terpenes and uh, uh, oils on the plants, but most effective on the powdery mildew? To be honest, uh, probably not a spray. Something like a, a UV light system has been the best, but that's not open or an option to, for everyone to use. Although that is becoming a democratized technology, but my favorite spray to use is a different kind of dosage would be um, a microbial biopesticide or potassium bicarbonate. I think those are the least um, negative for the metabolites and all the trichomes that you want to keep. That is really, really great advice. I really appreciate that. Um, so, Potassium bicarbonate is actually obviously very easy to get. That's uh, is that baking soda? So, yeah, similar. Baking is it baking is is it similar or is it, it actually be. baking soda? I believe uh, I believe people will call that baking soda in a lot okay. of places, including here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's really easy to get, um, and yeah, that would seem to be fairly innocuous and probably metabolize in the environment quite quickly. Um, can you use that? Right. You wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. That's why I like it. Cause it's not an environmentally toxic problem that you're going to have. So anyone who would be using it, it's also safe for other reasons too. Uh, it breaks down quickly, like you say, and it um, its effects are mild as well, but it's very negative for the powdery mildew. So it's a win-win. So what would the uh, formula, the recipe be for that? Oh, I, I'm not sure. Um, be honest, uh, usually I don't give out uh, much advice about creating the, the products. Mostly I just ah. use formulas that are available commercially. Three, two, one. Hey everyone, welcome back to our IPM special series. Today we're going to be focusing on transplanting and spraying our plants with plant therapy and Azimax to keep our girls healthy and spider mite free. We'll be showing you guys how to properly transplant those cannabis plants in their new home. And then we'll be going through the process of doing a foliar application with Azimax to eradicate the spider mites. Exciting stuff. That's right. Hope you all are ready to get rid of some bugs because we have a lot of work to do. So let's get started on episode two of our IPM special series. So is there a bicarbonate product that you'd like to recommend? There are a few out there. 
I've had a lot of experience with, for example, Millstop. Uh, that's very common. A lot of people use that. And I Say think that that's name pretty again? available to a lot of people. Say that name again? It's called Millstop. Millstop. Is that anything to do with Mills, the nutrient line? No, I think it's like a mildew stop. Got it. That would make sense. Okay. Well, obviously, um, with the internet, everybody can research and find that. But I'm also pretty sure if you did a little bit of research and went online, you could probably find a grower's recipe for making pretty much the same thing at home. Probably so. Probably um, so. Farmers are some of the most ingenious people I've ever met and continue to work with. So you're probably right. Yeah, we wouldn't be here without them, would we? Or no. the bees. <laughs> so That's true. Okay, so that's really, really helpful. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask you about for sure, well, let's, I want to go back to the beginning again really quickly. So um, in a really good environment is gonna definitely going to play a part in preventing it. Um, what about in your general IPM uh, sense? Uh, you know, your integrated pest management. Uh, you know, some people wouldn't consider mold IPM but it obviously is and so uh, what would be part of the regimen that you would say to you know from day one or is there a way is there a dip is there a spray you do you start spraying immediately what is the uh, modus operandi it really depends on your context like most things but I do heavily advise like a dip or some sort of preventative measure especially if you have if you're likely to get that especially early on some places i feel like they get harder hit harder and sometimes it's just a year-to-year -year thing it changes but um like a, a wettable sulfur dip is really popular for a lot of people you could for example use the potassium bicarbonate we were just talking about as well if you wanted when it comes to, I think with powdery mildew, the most important thing is like keeping your plants protected or sheltered if, if you can. If you're in a place like where I live, where it's very hot, very dry, um, and if you're growing outdoor, I feel like unless things get really chunky, you might not have as much of a problem depending on when you're planting. But uh, if you're indoor, then you obviously can keep your things much more protected. Some people like to use also, there are some products out there, some chlorine, chlorine dioxide uh, products where you hang them and they're, they're safe to, to be around and they will sort of um, neutralize the, the air around. Yeah. And that's what some people have used. I've actually seen examples on site with clients where they brought in like a, a, a microbe meter before and after and uh, there's a huge difference in the aerial quality. Of course, there are some factors to control for that kind of reading, but it was very impressive. I'm going to tell you, you know, I, I, like I said earlier in the show, I have powdery mildew again, and it's really just my own doing. I know that I could have prevented it. Uh, I just got a little lazy. And so I'm pretty sure my own personal advice to everybody out there is um, spray early and regularly with that bicarbonate because, um, you know, uh, and again, I don't have the recipe and I also don't have the frequency, but I'm sure gardeners have got this down and maybe it's a once a week thing, you know, so that, um, and if you use one of those really good, uh, those motorized, those mechanical sprayers, those foggers, and you, man, because I try to get in there with a little sprayer and get under and out. If you can send a fog and a mist into your room, into your tent on a regular interval and avoid uh, having it creep up on you on the end, it always seems to be a near the end thing. Yeah, I agree with you. I I'll say this though, you know, the first like three to five days of powdery mildew growth is totally invisible to us without a microscope. So if you wanted to be on a regimen, you might apply something like the potassium bicarbonate maybe every week or something like that. If you wanted to be just super sure that there's no problem. And for some people, it's worth it to, to do that uh, weekly. And for other people, it might be a little more laborious. But yeah, I think that would be pretty reasonable. 
Very good. And and I know that um, a lot of people have really good success uh, with the uh, the Dr. Zymes and the plant therapy products, um, especially through Veg. veg. Um, but I would definitely, and I am going to switch over to the potassium bicarbonate for flowering, if and when I should need that again. I think that one of the really important things I want to talk about is there is a method of cleaning your buds, your flowers, your plants post-harvest of powdery mildew um, using a hydrogen peroxide dip. Are you familiar with that? Yes, I've heard of that. Uh, can you, would you care to comment on that? Yeah, I know people who swear by it. I've never really done it myself. Sometimes I feel like... Um, I'm one of those people who, and I don't really have any evidence to back this up or anything like this, but to me, I just, I'm always afraid that I'll like wash too much off or something like that. But if you were going to dip with something, uh, peroxide is pretty, um, you know, sort of low residual, right? And it's an oxidant, right? So it's going to break up, it's going to react with any organic matter it comes across. I think think that might have an effect on some of the waxes of the trichome but again i don't really know for sure that's a good question though and i think some people are investigating into it that's a really good answer i appreciate that i uh um i do have some experience with it and i'd share that and um it definitely works really well on removing the powdery mildew i gotta tell you um you know i had some pretty significant powdery mildew and um, after doing it, uh, I believe the recipe was a cup per 20 gallons or thereabouts or something like that. Um, I think I put two cups in a 50 gallon barrel and uh, whole plant, you know, just submerge it carefully in there and, and then just give it a couple of good swishes and just hold it under for about 30, 40 seconds. Drip, take it out, let it drip and put it into a nice clean barrel of water. And just do the same kind of thing and hang it dry. Um, it's way better than the alternative of either destroying the product or smoking powdery mildew. So if there is any degradation, I personally on that round couldn't tell because I was just so so happy that I saved m- several pounds of really, really nice buds that were virtually, I couldn't find any afterwards. I was, I literally looked with a microscope and I couldn't find any. I was so happy. So it definitely does work in removing the, uh, the PM. I'm sure some young scientist will. Uh, hey, let me interject. There's yes. actually a really good video by Jorge Cervantes doing exactly that. Um, we'll do it one day, but Jorge has done a good video on doing the peroxide dip. Oh. There you go. I'll put the link in the bio or whatever. Oh, I love to do that. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, So I definitely can vouch for the fact that it works. And um, it was just uh, brought to my attention that Jorge Cervantes, good friend of mine, has a really good video out on exactly that procedure. So if it's good enough for George, it's good enough for me. (laughs) Always has been, always will be. I'll say this, though. Um, one, One thing about that, uh, dip is that it would affect more than just powdery mildew and I think I might say that if it was if I was going to describe a benefit to it it might even be for other fungi because one thing about powdery mildew is that it relies on a living plant not saying that it can't start to develop while the plant is sort of in that you know while it's dying after being harvested but actually it's those other bud rot fungi that maybe you would be um, really negatively affecting Whereas the powdery mildew, when the plant material is dead, it's dead too. So it's kind of, uh, it's a parasite, but it doesn't want its host to die. Right. And that's why I generally tell people not to worry about, once you've harvested, the PM doesn't seem to spread anymore. Now, if you put it in a completely terrible environment where it's 75, 85% humidity, it might not, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Actually... I can just say that I agree with you completely because I've never had to worry about PM coming back after you chop it down. So um, it's definitely, uh, it needs its host.
and bud rot's really bad too so it's always a good it's always good to have tools in the toolbox for that kind of a thing it's such a problem more and more lately too but if you're a home grower you can you can care about your product a lot a lot better right Right. I'm really glad I've only got 12 or 15 plants to dunk. It, it, it's a bit of a labor, you know, and uh, but it really works. So um, I'm not so worried about the little bit of powdery mildew that I have because I know it's going away. And uh, I know that the terps are going to blow me away anyways. So I don't think I'll be able to tell a difference. So yeah, that makes sense to me. I think that I've pretty much covered everything in my head. Matthew, can you think of anything about powdery mildew that we haven't brought up to enlighten our viewers? I think we went over a lot of the practical stuff. I like to get into the arcana a lot, and it's not always readily uh, important for people. But I think the biggest thing for me, here's one tip. Um, because the powdery mildew that affects cannabis is not not all of them are going to affect cannabis as the ones that affect all the other plants. One thing you can do is you can try to get rid of uh, weedy plants around that might potentially be a vector. You don't know. And there's not, um, you know, it hasn't been shown all of the different powdery mildews have been tested on cannabis. So we don't know. We know some, but not all. And I think that on top of that, just being, like you said, very vigilant is the best thing that you can do. So I think that's the, the best thing, uh, honestly. And don't take it too personally, because the plants that we grow, powdery mildew is just so virulent. And it will uh, it'll get better at, at cannabis, just as we get better at cannabis. So, you know, you have a good rival there. So don't take it too personally when it happens. Well, I don't. I kind, of, I kind of take it in stride, um, but I am, I am determined to have a run where I'm going to make everything nice and pretty and clean so that I can, I can actually uh, put it up for people. And uh, yeah, this has been really helpful for me, and I have a feeling for a lot of other people. And so I really want to thank you for doing the show. Thanks so much for having me. It was a great conversation. You've been really great, and Matthew, um, I'd like to have you back again when there's need for another uh, round of IPM or pathogen, pathological, what's the word, not patho <laughs> patho pathogenical? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a different kind of problem, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, when we Yeah, integrated pest management, right? We'll have need to talk about this again, and I certainly hope that I can call you up and have you on again. You absolutely can. I look forward to it. I look forward to our mutual success, Kyle. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. And uh, keep up the great work. I appreciate you being there for the Homegrown Cannabis Co. people. And uh, have yourself a great day. It's so great to talk to you. Well, that was another really good episode, if you happen to ask me. Um, Matt Gates was excellent. We had a nice discussion on powdery mildew and lots of tips in there. I'm sure some people will watch that one more than once. Yes, so uh, next week we have another really good guest. It's my good friend Derek Gilman of The Gangier Course that everybody has heard so much about and also Greenflower Media. Courses all over the country in colleges. Would you believe that? So we're going to talk about all that stuff. So don't forget to tune in. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you soon. Wah! <laughs>